destroy you all. I'll give you a game of volleyball you won't forget, and we'll play by my rules. I'll outdo myself, and you won't believe your eyes, monsters. Moon Podcast Escalation! everyone, my name is Jordan D. White. My name is Chris Sims, and this is Sailor Business. It's the podcast where we sit down with a friend each and every week and watch an episode of the classic 1992 Sailor Moon anime and talk about just why it is that we love it so much. Can you tell I've had a cup of coffee since the last episode? <laughs> I feel way more alert and refreshed. And it's a good thing I do, because folks, it's episode 100! It's our oh, 100th episode! Yay! Yeah, well, it's the 100th episode of Sailor Moon. It's, well, it's our 100th regular series episode. It's actually like episode 104? Something like that? Yeah, for us. in that realm, let's see. But those are all bonus episodes. Those don't count. b bonus It's our 100th episode, and we have an amazing, like, it's, it's the 100th episode of Sailor Moon, so obviously they're going to go all out. Uh, make it a big celebration. 100 episodes. Oh, no, wait. It is a Minako Spotlight <laughs> episode with oh. a lot of cheap-ass animation. Oh, poor animation. You're going to make fun of the animation. Oh, it's bad. It's bad, dude. Today, we are going to be watching episode 100 of Sailor Moon S. I want to quit being a Sailor Guardian. Minako's Dilemma. Minako Spotlight. With, I w- I'm going to go ahead and say varying quality involved. But to help us talk about that, we have a uh, a special friend back from last week's episode, Elizabeth Dubois. Welcome back to the show. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. I was just talking to my sister, like, in the week we left. In the yeah, in the... We thank you. Thank you yeah. for being the only guest we've ever had who plays along with the fiction <laughs> that it has been a week since the, we talked to each other last. Thank you. So she was talking uh, to me about, like, the songs we used to create about Stellar Moon. Oh, yeah? Uh, you used to, like, write songs? Let's hear about this. Yeah, but it, it's not, it's not like, real whole songs. It's basically, like, one or two sentences that we used to repeat over and over again with, like, a little singing voice. But it's in French anyway, so... Do you remember any of them? Because yeah. I would love to hear one. In French? Sure. Yes. Okay, there's one... <laughs> That is really, uh, it's so embarrassing. So it's about uh, Seller Jupiter. Okay. So, okay. Jupiter, Jupiter, amène les éclairs. Jupiter, Jupiter, amène les éclairs dans l'air. <laughs> and so what does that roughly mean? It means like Jupiter brings the lightning and then Jupiter brings the lightning in the air. Nice. Yeah, it means nothing. <laughs> I no, I like that. I think that's good. I think that's really good. And like there was another one that uh it it's a part of the manga and sometimes the translation was like weird a little bit. So there was like a, a page that uh, Sailor Moon was saying um but why why do you transform and then Mamoru uh answer back it's because because of my memories. And we used to just like repeat that all o- over and over and over again and make it to like a, a weird beat. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great. Having sisters. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, well, Elizabeth, have the, I, I guess I guess that is the answer to the question, but I was going to ask, have yeah. there been any recent Sailor Moon developments in your life? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, thank you for joining us for episode 100. Sure. It's it's so good to have you here. It's so good to have everybody listening. Uh, I'll, I'll save all that for the, the end of the show. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on into the episode. If anybody wants to hear uh, about your history with the show, check out last week's episode where we talked about it. And we also got a really good uh, letter from a listener. So if you, for some reason, missed last week's episode, definitely check it out. But now, Jordan, do we have any Twitter questions in honor of our 100th episode? And I say it that way so that you won't go back to literally last year. Oh, I already did. 
to pull us up from Twitter. Oh I my god. Did. I already did. And and <sighs> also it's not like we tweeted Nobody wants to like congratulate us on our hundredth episode in this like you didn't We didn't tweet it out, so I think nobody knows. <laughs> if only you could do that right now. If it only you fast could enough. It wouldn't co happen. Mm. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Chris. I'll tweet it right now. Okay. Uh, we'll check in at the act break to see if we got any congratulations. Okay. Okay, that's that's fair. That's fair. But in the meantime, we've got some questions. Uh, here's here's a quick question. Hey, Chris, uh, Samantha wants to know, what level are you at in Sailor Moon Drops, and what extra characters do you have now? Oh, my God. Uh, okay, so it turns out I'm kind of bad at Sailor Moon Drops, because <laughs> everyone I know is way ahead of me. I thought it was just hard. So I am, I'm currently playing the current event, which is uh, uh, Princess Kaguya's Lover. Oh, yeah, I need to get to it soon. But in the uh, in the main game, I'm still in like season one. I'm still in like the Queen Barrel uh, <laughs> levels, and everybody else is like onto the Deathbusters now. And I'm like, how? Like, how do you do that? Because like I play all the events and everything, but I am apparently way behind. Uh, I am on I think level one hundred and eighty three of the of the main story. So I'm getting towards the end of the Queen Barrel arc. I think. Uh, I think you're further away than me. I, I'm still in the Dark Kingdom in the early 100 level. Okay. Yeah. I'm probably on like level five. Like I haven't played in a long while. <laughs> <laughs> as far as characters, uh, I have Princess Serenity, who I play as pretty much all the time because she her ability gives you extra moves. I've got Ami Mizuno as a student. I've got Ami in her casual clothes. Uh, I've got Sailor V. I've got Michiru as a wish, uh, a witch. I did not get Haruka as Dracula, which I'm very upset about. Aww. And I have Usagi and Chibiusa in their Christmas clothes. So those are the those are the bonus characters that I have unlocked so far. That's fun. And of course the five regular century. Excellent. But I, I literally play Sailor. Like here's the thing, I play it every day. It's like the first thing I do when I wake up. It's like when I'm walking around the kitchen making coffee. I'm also playing Sailor Moon Drops. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, here's a crossover question. Uh, Angry Drag Queen wants to know, if a Sailor V kick connected with a Rider kick, would the universe implode? Uh, no, I think probably there would just be like, pr- probably it would just like hurt, hurt some feet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Brandon uh, wants to know, uh, oh, this is very appropriate. Is Venus a lost cause? How would you reinvent her so she's more than just an ersatz Yusagi slash Yusagi adjacent slash a block of wood. I I don't think Mina's a lost cause. I mean, we like, for all of my griping, this episode does do some, like, interesting Mina stuff. I, I think it's really cute. Like, a, kind of the last closest thing we got to a spotlight with Mina was the episode where it's her and Usagi, like, in, like creeping on Michiru and Haruka, right? Right. And I thought that episode, she came off really well, like, because it played up to, like, played up in their similarities. I think a lot of our problems with Minako is that they try to distinguish her by having her be more boring, like, be more serious. And I don't think that works. Uh, I, I think when you play it up and, and like, make her, like, Usagi to the max, I think maybe <laughs> she even works a little bit better. Like, uh, Elizabeth, what do you think? No. We talked about your favorite being being Ray, but do you yeah. have any any feelings regarding Mina? Yeah, when the uh, Seller V came out, I bought the manga and I started to have like a little change of heart and started to really like Minako a lot, but mm-hmm. that didn't last afterwards. I don't know, like in the anime, she's pretty bad. <laughs> The difference between Venus and uh, Moon, the difference between Usagi and Mina, I think does have to, there because there is a difference. And I think the biggest one is to do with what we always talk about as Usagi's superpower, which is her friendship superpower. Mm. Because Venus doesn't have that. Like, Venus isn't as nice as Usagi, and she's not as friendly, and she's not as caring. Yeah, she's a bit more self-centered. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, she has the kind of, like, goofiness and the the obsessiveness and the, you know, nosiness and all of those things that Usagi has. But, but she go- also goes around thinking she's the best at everything, which is in a kind of cute way, not in a, like, what an asshole kind of way, usually. But, but yeah, she definitely doesn't come from quite as, as nice of a place as Usagi does. Yeah, I, I think I, I think the fun with Mina 
is the f- like you can do things with Mina that you can't do with Usagi mm. because Usagi is the main character, right? Like Usagi's Princess Serenity, she, Usagi's Neo Queen Serenity, but but Mina isn't. Like you know, Mina doesn't have a destined moon lover. She, Mina's got Ray, <laughs> so exactly. <laughs> I feel like you can do things with her in in spotlight episodes that would be more fun. Just by, like, in the same way that you can do things with Supreme that you can't do with Superman, you know? Sure, sure. Mina like, is actually kind of halfway between Usagi and Rey in many ways. Like, she's kind of like... Like, a, literally. Like, like physically. Like, that's like true. Physically as well. There. <laughs> she's their child from the future. Uh... Oh, that's, that's the big reveal. <laughs> <laughs> that does kind of screw up that relationship, though, yeah, so I don't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's not. Uh, I don't think Mina's a lost cause. I, I think Mina's biggest problem is that she was created as a prototype, and so like Sailor, like Codename Sailor V is fantastic, and it's a great superhero story, but it's never gonna like she's never gonna be Sailor Moon, you know. But I don't, I don't think she's a lost cause. I think they just need to make her more engaging, like give her stuff to do. Well, you know, at the end of uh, of Dark Kingdom, when they're in the North Pole and like all the sailors get killed, and then the last one is Ray, they could have switched that out to Minako because it would have um, maybe give her a little more personality. And uh, in the manga, she she has a way more prominent role as a leader of the the inner senshi. I, I think that's I, I think that's something that's that, that is very easy to tap into. So Mina, not a lost cause. Just maybe not maybe not in this episode. Mm. Where her defining trait is likes volleyball. And it's <laughs> petty. Basically. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Um uh, Mike Donahue asks, wouldn't a uh Usagi Ami ship be called Bell Curve? <laughs> <laughs> Rude. Rude. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, let's see what else we got. Ron Ron says, hey, uh, do you think Tuxedo Mask is a virgin when he meets Sailor Moon? If not, did he lose his virginity in the Sailor Moon R movie? Uh, which obviously Chris has not seen yet. So we won't spoil that. Oh, n- now I'm... Mm, I was really upset <laughs> that I wouldn't be able to see that in the theater before. Now I'm starting <laughs> to feel grateful. Um, what do you think? Do you think? Do you think Tuxedo Mask is a virgin when he meets Sailor Moon as a fully grown 18-year-old man? Well, as as we know, like he and Motoki probably fooled around a little bit, right? <laughs> you think so? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe. So, so, so your answer is a aff- uh, definite no. Uh yeah. I'm gonna. Well, for for the, why? Why would you even ask this question? <laughs> To make you talk about Memoru's sex life. Uh, pass. pass. I guess the, the more pass. important question Hard is... Pass. The more important question no? is... No? No? Whatever you're going to say, no, <laughs> I don't want it. Um, okay. Uh, if Ray's psychic powers comes from her being a quarter monster, how would that manifest in her spawn? I guess her presumably one-eighth monster, uh, assuming she doesn't marry a monster, or someone else who is born of monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think maybe our our child will be like, oh, I have like an intuition, but then they don't know if it's right or wrong, and it's like everyone else basically. Oh, you think it'll you think it'll basically breathe out of her? <laughs> just normal, just normal yeah, style. Kind of normal. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Unless she marries a monster, which is also possible. I feel like there is literally no way uh, Ray is having kids. Like zero oh. percent chance. Well, there was some kind of a hint in the in the manga about what's his name, uh, the first Dark Kingdom prince. Jedi. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, that's it. He was like oh, really in love with her when he first saw her, and there's like maybe something there, but now he's a rock. So, I, <laughs> I guess that's out of the question. But now he's a rock. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's in eternal sleep. He's the, he's, you know, he could come back. Oh, yeah, he could come back and, and strike up a relationship. So, oh, so maybe th- there's a little hope. The, see, I kind of am surprised that, that you're still allowed to have children in the future where no one ever ages or dies. She's with Minico in, anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah, basically. <laughs> they, could, they could adopt. No child. But, uh, 
They won't be. Well, there's like, not going to be any children to adopt because yeah. everyone is an adult. There's one. There's one. <laughs> there's one. She's 900 years old. The worst child. Our friend uh, Jonathan Chisholm II asks us, considering all Kaori Knight can do with her hair, what products do you think she uses? Uh, have we gotten to her doing stuff with her hair in the show yet? Yeah, didn't she do... She did something did Medusa style at one point. Yeah, we talked about yeah. it. Yeah. She, she, did, she did some Medusa move at one point. Some Medusa move. I mean, Marvel's Medusa. I think it was in the episode with the race with Mishihu and Aruka... Oh, I do vaguely remember that. I don't know. I think she probably just uses, like, crushed up diamond eggs, probably. Oh, oh ew. Oh, what, what's the... Um, there's a product called... I don't know what... I don't remember the name, but it basically it's to help your hair grow longer, faster. And it, it makes it greasy a lot, too, I think. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the, the product I, I, I'm trying to remember is called NutriCap. So maybe it's French, but I'm not sure. All right. Well, I think we can take that as the definite answer. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think I think crushed up diamond eggs. It's for that's, that's what hair I'm and nails. So. You think you think Tomo would allow her to crush up the diamond eggs? He loves those yeah. little guys. Maybe just the goo then. <laughs> I I think Kaylee uh, Kaylee is uh, is just doing whatever she wants. I, I think she's I think she is Spectre Sister style running this operation. Damn. No respect for Professor Tomoe. Or maybe it's in the tea she, she prepared. Mm. That's uh, that's all for Twitter questions this time. If you have a question, you can send it to uh, at Sailor Business on Twitter, and uh, eventually we'll catch up. Or eventually I will convince Jordan to do a Twitter purge. We're actually really close. So, uh, oh, yeah, we're actually really close. So please send us questions. We, we yeah. need more and more and more questions. Yeah, especially uh, today, which is two weeks ago. Uh, when we are in, when we want some celebratory messages to celebrate our hundredth episode, we're gonna get them. We we will, we will. I I have I have faith in our listeners. But now, let's talk about uh, Sailor Moon S episode one hundred. I want to quit being a Sailor Guardian. Minako's dilemma. <laughs> Sailor Moon Soup. It's delicious. Yep. Okay, Jordan, the title of this episode, we just said it, but I'm assuming it has a different title in the uh, Cloverway dub. D- there's no possible way you will guess it. None whatsoever. What if I did know it and you would never believe me that I didn't no. look it up? There's no way I would believe you. There's no possible way that I would believe you didn't look it up if you guessed it right now. <laughs> okay, give me a hint. Give me a hint. <sighs> I'm... Uh, uh, yeah. It has nothing to do with the, the original title whatsoever at all. If anything, it's connected most to a, a, a really, the best part of the episode, in my opinion, but which they changed substantially in the dub, so I'm still shocked that they would put this as the title. Okay, so is it about the volleyball monster? No. So, is the, is it, so it's not about volleyball? No. I don't know what the best part of the episode could be then. If it's not that amazing monster. <laughs> I'll tell you the title. Because, again, there's no chance that you will guess yeah, okay. it is called Individual Happiness. What? That's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Chris is dying from that title. That Jesus. Is not, that is bananas. Yeah, I don't know why they called it that. It's a terrible title. What? What? Okay, individual happiness. Okay, is there a reference we're missing? No. Again, I'm linking it to the part where they talk about ordinary happiness, but even that doesn't quite fit because they changed that a lot. I, I don't know why they called it that. I guess because she's more concerned with her individual happiness than with the happy than with the being part of the Sailor Scouts. I don't know. What? It's a okay. terrible title. Okay. What? What ifs? On that. <laughs> so how does this episode kick off? Well, we open on a shot of Ami. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. That was an actual math book. <laughs> oh, no. boo, poor Amy. <laughs> that, was, that was funny. That was very, very funny. Yeah, you're right. So, <laughs> so we open in the classroom uh, at uh, Minako's school, uh, where people are talking about how uh, matching outfits uh, are taggy. 
<laughs> and I'm assuming that Minako is upset by this because she and her girlfriend often wear matching outfits when they are Sailor Scouts. <laughs> no. You don't think uh, that's it? I think that's that it. Is, that's not... She's upset because she doesn't have a boyfriend. Yeah, she's sour because she cannot get couples t-shirt. She's boy crazy. Yeah. That's, that's her other... She's like Usagi, except Usagi has a boyfriend. Oh, that's so. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> and then she walks up. So she's, she listens to this couple talking about matching outfits and is literally sitting there thinking to herself, that's a fucking stupid idea. Stupid yeah. <laughs> and then she walks outside and is just like passed by every happy couple in town. Like every <laughs> joyful <laughs> people in love just runs or walks by her. Yeah, I'll just ride, riding on the BMX, <laughs> <laughs> pulling each other to the movies. Just so many, so many happy couples. And here is is Minako Aino, the soldier of love herself, uh, alone, but for her asshole cat. And she yells, <laughs> "Stop showing off!" But her asshole cat does show up. You're right. He jumps from the sky like an angel. Well, he's a moon cat, so... Artemis shows up, and he's like, Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm on the street, so I'm gonna start talking to you in a normal human voice. Even though I'm a cat. <laughs> There's lots of people around. That's fine. Uh, so Artemis starts talking about how they've been putting all the information into the computer, and they've been trying to figure out what it is that turns objects into diamonds, uh, which is a good thing to figure out. They haven't seen the eggs yet, I guess. Which is weird, because an egg always pops out of the thing. Like, an egg literally, like, pooped out of the uh, the train, or the tram. God, we keep calling it a train. Uh, out of the streetcar last week. Like, it just, you know, there was one that just, like, kind of, like, bloop, like, popped on out. Oh, and man. In front of everyone. Any streetcar named Desire jokes that whole episode. No, we didn't, because we kept calling it a train, which was wrong. Because, like, we, they didn't defeat it by relying on the kindness of strangers or anything like that. That's true. So Mina uses, like, says one of her uh, wrong aphorisms, which is a terrible gimmick. <laughs> uh, and she says, one who sees love will be seen by love, which actually does sound like, like, right. And she goes, who was the philosopher who said that? And Artemis goes, no one said that. <laughs> Nobody ever said that. that. That's all you. I mean, he's trying to be all business and she's clearly. All sailor business. <laughs> yes. And she's clearly, like, not into it. Do you think that... Mm, I don't even want to talk about it. What? I was going to say, do you think Artemis is in love with her? N no, no. He's a cat. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But, spoiler, cats can fall in love with people. No, mm. with cat people. We'll get there. No, but we they can also fall in love oh, with regular yeah, people. yeah, that's right. <laughs> but that was because of Sugar Rush. <laughs> <laughs> If I remember correctly. I don't remember if that's yeah, true. Yeah, I think, I think so. Mina starts telling a story about how she wants a, a boy to show up with roses and say to her, Miss, will you be my date tonight? And she does like a, a boy voice, yeah. which is pretty funny. And like, why hasn't any, why doesn't anybody want to do that to me? And, uh, and Artemis thinks to himself, not happening, which yeah, is well, like, I mean, so dicky. Yeah, because look. Minako is, I mean, she's tragically ugly. She's just <laughs> completely unlovable, right? Because that's kind of the implication here. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know why she's not getting any dates. How old is she? Is she 15? She's, she's, the, she's 14. She's the same age as all the others. Has it not been their birthdays yet? I guess. Uh, well, I mean, they're going into their next year. So she, she's either 14 or just turned 15. So uh, while she's complaining about not having a boyfriend, coincidentally, a volleyball lands at her feet. A handsome boy. A handsome boy has accidentally knocked a volleyball. And she, uh, she skillfully volleyballs it right back to him. And he's like, uh, oh, yeah, hey, I'm uh, playing volleyball all summer long because I want to, you know, win the championships. And then he says, which I thought was weird, that playing volleyball all summer also will help him focus on his high school entrance, entrance exams, which I was like, okay. Yeah, curricular activities, I think, helps you somehow. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would make sense. There's, there's so much manga and anime about, like, like Clubs. where everybody in, uh, in school is in a club, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Like, and in fact, I was watching um, Game Center CX, and the question that Arino always asks to, uh, like, the new assistant directors 
is what clubs they were in in high school. So it's it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. Huh. Well, so then he's about to go back, but then he goes, you know, but Mina, actually, uh, hey, uh, how come you stopped playing volleyball when you came back from from England? How come you stop playing volleyball when we know that when Dracula shows up, you will say that playing volleyball is your fondest dream? <laughs> There's no Dracula in this version of life. And she does not answer. And now here's the thing. I actually don't know what the answer is. Because like, yeah, what's the answer? <laughs> well, I think that before she went to England, she didn't know she was Sailor V. So basically she Wait, hasn't known her life. Did she not find out she was Sailor V until she went to England? I don't know. I Maybe. think that's how it works in the show. Like, we at least know that she was Sailor V while she was in England. I mean, sure. like, the England stuff is is only in the, the anime. That is not what yeah. Sailor V does in the manga at all. Yeah. I don't know, man. Ray still has time to be a priestess and put on a talent show. Amy still has time to go to lots of study cram sessions. Yeah, but I think the thing when, when you're in the, like, when you're into sports and and stuff like that and you have like competition there's like set time that's true you can't just ditch out yeah but it it doesn't make that much sense even then so at any rate she's she did she doesn't answer why and then he starts talking about how she does this she used to do this move called the flying dig and flip which is preposterous Because literally, okay, so a volleyball is coming at her. She jumps for it, hits it with her hand. That's all sensible. That's volleyball. That's, that's then, a dig. After doing that, she flips over and lands like with a flourish. Yeah. Why would you do the flip? <laughs> Completely superfluous. Yeah, style. Oh, okay. Do you get style points in volleyball? No. Uh, yeah. You might as well. <laughs> you might as well. I guess. I'm sorry. Is she playing? Uh, is she playing Dead or Alive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's doing Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. Uh, well, Jordan, Jordan, why would you uh, spin around and do an elaborate dance number before doing Moon Spiral Heart Attack? Why would you announce yourself with a speech about how someone should douse themselves in water and repent? These, like, it's yeah. it's what they do. Wait, it's so, but no, but I assume that those crazy things are symptoms of being a Sailor Scout. But now you're proposing this is just oh. a world of elaborate things. <laughs> Minako's a Sailor Scout. Did you not get that from the was previous it? 99 episodes of the show? We just talked about that she wasn't when she played volleyball. Yeah, well, she, well, she was still a reincarnated oh, space oh, princess. Oh, oh. oh, so the flip was a was her, her like, Ven- Venusian roots coming out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> actually, Jordan. Her because roots, if, you'll, say, actually. if you'll remember from, uh, from discussions that we've had way back on the show, when we talked about what are the scouts' superpowers. And Mina's superpower is she has super agility. She's yes. very good at athletics. She's very good at gymnastics and flips. So, yes, that flip is her Venusian superpower. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 like, she plunges to reach the ball. So either she would land on her face or she can do the flip and then be okay. <laughs> so it's style and it's practical. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? What, what? what was it called again? What was it called again? Oh. The flying dig and flip. Oh. Flying dig and flip. I'm just going to Google and see if... If that actually comes up with anything uh, for volleyball, it wants to suggest maybe I met flying dog and flip. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, you did. Please. Yes. I'm yes. going to add volleyball. No, nope, I'm not getting any. It's in fact, it's in fact showing me the flying dog <laughs> results <laughs> because there are apparently more of them. No, no, I met flying dig. But like. Uh, the sweet, sweet volley boy, uh, a bit like a Greg number two. It seems like <laughs> Greg syndrome all over again. Yeah, this guy, this guy is just athletic, Greg. Yeah. He, well, he's not telepathic though. He's not a monster like Greg. No, was. but you'll see. There's something paranormal going on uh, in That's a little true. bit. That is true. Yeah. Uh, I did find a YouTube video called Volleyball Flip, but it's just a guy doing some flips on a volleyball court while a game is going on in the background. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I am the 687th person to watch this video. So Nicely done. Nicely done. Well, wait a second. Now I'm watching a video uh, about how to roll. Like, why are we spending so much time on this? It's just... <laughs> 
It's a flashy move. You do like dive and kind of roll around in volleyball, like you know, to to dig. You, you don't want to like go flat on your face, especially yeah. if you're playing not beach volleyball. Especially if you're playing on a court, like you can, like you do need to do something to kind of actually. So this her doing this is akin to when they do things like where like Spider Man is like, I'm gonna be on the basketball team and use my spider powers to be awesome, and then it's like, no, that's cheating and that's wrong. So that's why she quit volleyball because she was like. Yeah. This is cheating. It's unfair for me to do my awesome moves. Well, she didn't know. She just thought she was very good at flipping. Well, she eventually, but I'm saying when she got back. I'm actually watching this video of these uh, these girls doing volleyball training, and they're literally training how to roll out of a dig. So yeah, I think this is I think this is super heroically plausible. This, how to roll out of a dig, not how to flip so you land on your feet before you do a dig, before you land yeah, on the she, ground. She she just sprinkles some style in it. That's it. <laughs> God. Why do you hate Minako so much, yeah. dude? Oh, get out of here. All right. Well, she wanted to continue playing volleyball, but she can't finish that sentence. Then uh, the dude, the, the dude and her just like sit there smiling at each other like a bunch of dipshits. And <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's You're true. So mean. You're so mean. They're just sitting there smiling at each other. And then he gets called back in by his manager or whatever. Uh, his team captain, whatever, to practice more. Then we cut to Mina at home, undoing her hair, uh, where yes. we see how much Mina. massive amount of hair she has. She has to put that ribbon back. Mina looks weird without her bow in her hair. Yeah. Honestly, like the bow in her hair is what gives her like this little tiny particle of a personality with yes. her hair loose. She's not a block of wood anymore. She's sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> so she sees the volleyball that she keeps in her room with her stuffed animals and it gives her a flashback to her awesome move and to like saying yo peace what's up to uh the the, the handsome guy whose name i've already forgotten this is the second time we've seen his name's asai by the way there you go rag number two this is the second time we've seen mina's bedroom and it's just covered in stuffed animals yeah, she's got lots of them. So then we get her uh, daydreaming out the window with, with uh, Artemis, and we cut to <laughs> Professor Tomoe. It's so gross. <laughs> the sound it makes, too, it's like... <laughs> Ew. Yeah, that's accurate. That's accurate. So Kaori Knight has decided he keeps getting pretty mad at me. Let me bring him some tea and <laughs> bake him some cookies. <laughs> Yeah, because you know how to bake cookies, but you don't know what a train is, though. <laughs> Ow. How can this be? No. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Maybe they're probably not very good yeah. cookies. He doesn't eat any of them. Yeah, he goes to her. Tea's very nice, Scary Night. But you haven't found any of those talismans, have you? Uh, no, no, no. He's hasn't. also wearing his, like, super huge David Byrne lab coat, by the way. Yeah. He's enormous so in this scene. He's really, like, a lot more cartoonish in this one. Yet, yes. like, I remember Professor Tomoe in the manga is more, like, not so mad science, not so much the mad part, but more, like, serious scientist kind of getting crazy in the way he's evil, but not as cartoonish mm -hmm. as, as this. <laughs> So while he drinks his tea, he decides, hey, you know what would be better is if we went after athletes. <laughs> yeah. Well, what he says is, what he says is, a healthy heart resides in a healthy body. So we should be go going to look at athletes with healthy bodies to get their pure hearts. And hang on just a goddamn minute. <laughs> are these real hearts or soul hearts? Because you are getting me confused, Professor Tomoe. Yes. Yeah. It, it certainly makes it sound more like they are real hearts, but they are not. Yeah. But, like, the, the, what? What? They're metaphor hearts. He's, he's full of shit. Yeah, and like in the manga, I remember that um, basically they are after souls and hearts, so m much like this. But it's more for the energy part of it, and they're searching for the holy grail, not the talisman, so... Basically, they're also trying to implant daemon eggs in people, not in objects. And it's hmm. way more intense. So, like, in the anime, they tone it down a lot with the, 
the demon eggs becoming demons from objects. But in the manga, it's more like alien style, like demon coming out of your body, basically. And oh. I think people actually died in the manga. Ah, uh, there you go. That's yeah. why they would change that, yeah. yeah. And they added the talismans, I think, and just like with the rainbow crystals, they were just kind of padded out. Before we get to the thing we really want, we have to find the first yeah. step. And... We've got to fill a season. 50 episodes. Yeah, 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 exactly. And in fact, um, about uh, the talisman, the talisman are uh, also kind of related to Shintoism because they're called Imperial regalia of japan so basically it's the um, three objects that amaterasu omikami uh, gave to the emperor so it's related to uh, myths and like legends and stuff like that so in shrines sometimes you have like substitute of a sword a mirror and some kind of jewel and oh. they're in a room where only the priest can go, so no one can see it. That's something that we've we've talked about. I think we've talked about it on the show before. We definitely got an email about it um, because yeah, Haruka carries yeah. a sword and Michiru carries a mirror. Yeah. Like, we haven't seen her use the mirror, have we? No. I don't think we've seen it yet. I don't think we've seen the sword yet either. No. Okay. On the show. I didn't think so. Well, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spo- heads up. So Tomo is... is, is is taking matters into his own hands. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm hoping that next episode, when this fails, he's not like, this is all your fault since it was his idea this time, but whatever, we'll find out. Listen, go find me a diamond with, like, just volleyball boops. Uh, that'll solve all the problems, <laughs> Kaylee. Have a good one. Next day, or sometime oh, later, or whatever. Wait, what? she, she, Kaori Knight asked Tomoe what his favorite sports is. Right, right. And he says, like, stair-stepping? Yes. And then they spend such a long while on this, like, scene where she just, like, open her mouth just a little bit and there's nothing. And it's just complete silence. And then there's another scene where you see them from afar. And it's it takes so much time. It's like she's surprised, but her expression is so not intense. It's It's so weird. Yeah, I got the impression that it was supposed to be lame. She slightly opens her mouth. Well, yeah, she just opened her mouth and that's it. And it's like so small. In the Viz dub, the, his answer to uh, when she asked him what sport he enjoys. And, and I got to say, I really like uh, Professor Tomoe's voice in the Viz dub. Because he, he sounds like a less sibilant Cobra commander. <laughs> uh, and so she asks him, she's like, uh, what sport do you enjoy, Professor? And he goes, rhythmic gymnastics. <laughs> And then takes a sip of his tea. So I think it's definitely supposed that's to be creepy. a gag. Like, the translation yeah. is stepboard workouts, which I'm not... I guess it's just like when you have the little thing in front of you and just kind of step up on it. Yeah. Like, step aerobics. While watching the, uh, Amer- the original dub, uh, I wrote down, not based on anything he actually said, but kind of based on the way he acts and his tone of voice, that, that uh, in the movie of this season, they should have Stephen Colbert play Tomo. Oh, that would be pretty good. That would be good. <laughs> So we cut back to uh, Minako hanging out with Asai, who is like, who, who no. does that really wait, cool. Wait, no, he's, the, he's not even, she's not hanging out with him. She's just walking down the street and he. She's, she's walking to school and he comes, he comes up. He runs up to catch her. They pass by a restaurant called Pasta Bella, yep. which I think is a, a really good name for a restaurant. Uh, and he does that cool thing where he's like, hey, you know, I used to really have a crush on you. Bye. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Which is that, a fucked super up thing cool move. Super, um, super cool move. They also walk by a, a shop of some sort called Twins Star. Yeah, you know. I want to know what that is. It's, uh, it's where you got to get all your twins and stars. <laughs> Great. Love it. Yeah, he, this is kind of a dick move on his part. We'll find out. Cause, because yeah. this is the thing. Com- you combine what he actually says and also the fact that he, again, ran to catch her. Yeah. It certainly suggests he's into her. He also goes, hey, I, you know, do you have a boyfriend? Because, you know, I'd like a girlfriend that I could do sports with. And you're mm-hmm. so good at sports that I had, like, such a crush on you. Like, back when I... back, But, you know, I guess I gotta go. Like, you know, I was gonna tell you I had a crush on you, but I never did. Bye! Because, like, because, like the implication also being very much like, I'm a volleyball guy. So, like, I think I can only date, like, a volleyball girl? That's pretty much it. Well, fortunately, we're going to have a volleyball girl later on in this episode. <laughs> now, Jordan, I believe you also wanted to say the, the name of this other restaurant that they're walking past. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know what the fuck it is. It's either Tina Mary or Tana Mary, and I couldn't quite tell. Again, definitely a restaurant. What do you think? Does it say Tina Mary or Tana Mary? I think it says Tana Mary. T-A-N-A-M-A-R-R-Y. It's just like whatever the second letter is, it doesn't look like the other A's. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't have a lot to say about it. Sorry. So Mina goes... Yeah, you know, haha, it's really funny that you were going to say you had a crush on me and that you really want to date someone you can play volleyball with because I'm, like, super busy. So, <laughs> bye, bye. Uh, and she Are turns sure? pink. Not only does she blush, all of her non-blushing skin is also, like, hot pink. Yep. Uh, then we get to cut to him playing volleyball and Carrie Knight, Carrie Knight uh, creeping on him. Because, you know, he's an athlete, which probably means he has a pure heart, as manifested by his collared long sleeve sweatshirt. And uh, and tight volleyball shorts. <laughs> Long sleeves and shorts again. It's a thing. It's an official thing. I, I we, we got a couple tweets about this when I was talking about wearing long sleeves and shorts. Like, l- like, long sleeves and shorts is a cute look. Like, don't get me wrong. But, like, there's a specific kind of long sleeves and shorts look that we've been getting. Like, Ami wearing a blouse with, like, a cameo at her throat. And shorts. And now this dude, like, in his volleyball collared sweatshirt. And high waisted, uh, high waisted belted shorts. Okay, it's time for the ins- scene of insanity. Are you ready for this? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the next scene we cut to is the girls studying again. First, let me say, uh, cookbook is not sharing a side anymore. They're still next to each well, other, but they all have their own sides now. Except we have a, we have a schedule. Reason, by the way, did you see the schedule that they have? Oh, set I up? did. I did. Go, ahead. go over the schedule. Okay, two thirty to four thirty study. Four thirty to five snack. 5 to 6, study again. 6.30 to 7, dinner, parentheses, all I do is eat. Uh, 7 to 8, planning session time. Who wrote this schedule that all they do is eat? Gotta be Usagi. Yeah. Gotta be Usagi. Okay. All right. So we cut to this. Uh, so it's uh, Usagi and, uh, and Mina are sharing a side this time. And Usagi's asleep. And Mina is cackling like a mad woman. And so why is she cackling like a mad woman? Well, because she's reading a Sailor V comic and she gets Usagi to look at it and she's going, look, look, it says there's this part about who is Sailor V and they have Sailor V without her mask on. And she's like so beautiful. Obviously, any guy would go out with her. And like, that's exactly what I would look like if if I was a manga character, obviously. And everybody is like, "Uh, you are fucking crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Then we find out not only that, but she has brought to the study session... Sailor V diet chocolates and Sailor V vitamin drinks, which immediately made me go, wait a minute, is she licensing Sailor V out like as herself and they're shipping her Sailor V stuff that's, or is she buying it? That's the question I had. Like, <laughs> yes. did she go to the store or is this just like, are they just shipping, you know, comps to Aino Minako, Juban right. District, Tokyo? Because there's a lot of stuff. Like, if she went to the store and bought them, then she was, like, shelling out a pretty hefty sum to buy diet chocolate and vitamin drink for all her friends. Well, since her identity is secret, I think she bought them. That's that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but she, she... Also, what's diet chocolate? I don't know. Maybe, like... I have no idea. Chocolate that is darker? Because there's less... Sugar? Maybe it's like sugar-free yeah. chocolate, which sounds uh, terrible. It does. Oh, but that's a thing. Sugar-free chocolate definitely yeah. exists. I'm looking at sugar-free Hershey's right now. That's not what I want. <laughs> yeah. So she's, again, she's spazzing out and she's saying, uh, I brought you guys all diet chocolates and vitamin drinks. And everybody is staring at her because she's crazy. Uh, and then uh, Lita opens the uh, the chocolate and says, oh, it says I won on the wrapper. And she's like, oh, my God, if you get three, then you can get a Sailor V badge. <laughs> and everybody's like, uh, OK. Like maybe like maybe you can't just get us one of those. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I do want to point out, though, I do have a pin, like an enamel pin that is on my jacket that is of a friend of mine's face. It's it's a Kyle Starks' face. So it is like it is perfectly acceptable to me that Mina would be like, hey, do you want a Sailor V pin? Like a pin of me? <laughs> like, do you want to wear my face on your clothes? <laughs> perfectly, perfectly normal. Well, sure. And again, that's also very Mina because she wants to be a, an yeah. idol, right? Um, yeah. So 
So Amy's like, I don't think you're taking your studies seriously. And again, now I, oh, I haven't said that Mina is like talking so fast and mm-hmm. crazy. So her response to that is, there it is, Professor Amy's specialty. Uh, oh, I want to talk about this. I'm sorry, Professor. Minako, the guardian of love and justice, is a bad girl who doesn't like oh, to study. Boy. I even cheat sometimes, but I don't yeah. care at all. Yeah. Uh, Minako looking at Ami across the table and going, oh, I'm sorry, Professor. I've just been a bad girl. <laughs> like, That's not how she says it. She doesn't say it sultry. Uh, I was watching this and I was like, whoa, slow it down with the subtext, Sailor Moon. <laughs> He's off the gas a little bit. She, especially like, like yeah. She just say, uh, "There it is, Professor Amy's specialty." Uh, I'm sorry, Professor Minako, the guardian of love and justice, is a bad girl who doesn't like to study. I even cheat sometimes, but I don't care at all. See, I don't. I didn't read it in that tone of voice the way that you read it. No, I mean obviously she's she's just like goofing off and playing around, and then she collapses. And then lies on her back and goes, maybe I'll quit the Sailor Guardians for a while. Well, then quit. (laughs) (laughs) The title is even like, oh, Sailor V is quitting. Well, then quit. (laughs) Stop whining about it and quit. (laughs) Shit or get off the pot. (laughs) (laughs) Like, okay, here's my question. Like, you you can't, right? Like, you can't quit being a Sailor Scout. Like, I guess you could quit showing up, right? She'll put her her sailor uniform in the garbage can and walk away saying Sailor V no more. Right, of course, of course. It's so much like this episode with Amy going to Germany or something, so it's it's almost the same. Yeah. Yeah, except that Ami had like as as we found out, Ami had like a reason. Like Ami had a reason for quitting. Minika's just like Because love ain't a reason? She, no. <laughs> no. Plus also, Chris, she was an ace volleyball player in her first year. That's true. That's true. That's she, she, she was the play. best volleyball player, it, even when she was a freshman. So I have a couple things about this. First is that Minako is acting like she's on drugs in every like very special yes. episode yes. Right, of everything. Yes. Like she she's acting like she is on Jesse Spano's caffeine pills. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Second, maybe the best thing about this entire episode, Usagi is sleeping through this entire yeah. thing. Like, Usagi kind of wakes up when Minako literally grabs her to show her the Sailor V manga. But, like, mostly Usagi is just, like, passed out (laughs) next to her on the table. Which I think is hilarious. Because if you want to differentiate Minako from Usagi, I think that's how you do it. I think Minako is always going wide open 100% at all times. And (laughs) Usagi is literally, like, passed out drooling on the table next to her. Even when Minako leaves, she, she doesn't budge at all. She stayed there and she's she's sleeping like through through it all. Even when she leaves and the cats yeah. are talking and all that stuff, she she's still like sleeping. I love yeah. it. I love it. I think it is great. Um, but yeah, Mina goes from oh I'm sorry, Professor. Mina Mina's a bad girl. I sometimes I she sometimes, but I don't even care. <sighs> Maybe I'll quit the same. <laughs> <laughs> like and then everybody gasps, and then she goes, "I'm just kidding. Bye." Yeah. And then leaves. <laughs> Yeah, M- Mina's Mina's going through some shit right now. <laughs> so then out she goes. Uh, she's going home, uh, and then Artemis tries to stop her. At which point Makoto goes, "Artemis, check this out." And he's like, "What? What?" And then Mina leaves, and so then uh, Makoto goes, "Nothing." Slams the door <laughs> shut. The, the door shut. <laughs> it's a boss move. <laughs> Um, and then poor Artemis, though, because then, yeah, I mean, everybody is just like, yeah, she wants to be alone and figure shit out. Like, leave her alone. And Artemis is like, oh. Which is like, which is weird, because just last episode, we saw Makoto being like, hey, maybe someone should go tra- talk to her. Like, maybe someone should go talk to Ray. But like, Minako, like, who cares? Like, fine. Go go spend time with yourself. <laughs> take take your self-branded chocolates with you. So then uh, cut to boy playing volleyball. And guess what? Diamond Egg goes into a volleyball. Boy, does it. Boy, does it ever go into that volleyball. It's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows if there are, like, translated designs or documents, or, like, I would read an oral history of designing the monsters for Sailor Moon S 
in a heartbeat. Even compared to, like, season one, like, even compared to regular Sailor Moon, where we were getting, like, sexy haircut monster, or or sexy, uh, sexy whatever monster, sexy minotaur in, in R. They weren't that, like, they weren't that sexy, though, because they had kind of scary faces. They weren't that sexy, and they also weren't, like, such bizarre concepts. No. Like, I want to hear, I want to see the notes from the meeting where somebody was like, okay, so we need a sexy volleyball. For this episode, Get, take a volleyball, take a sphere, and sex it up. <laughs> However you can. Well, they're gonna. Just you Oh, wait. boy, are they. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically amazing. But as soon as it goes into the volleyball, we hit our... <laughs> and Chris, we did get some messages from people... About our 100th episode. Uh, Tilda Cho says, congrats on not dying. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> the it's a little more ominous than I would have liked, but okay. The, the lobotanist says, I guess there is rubbish for every trash pile. <laughs> it's, so a it's a compliment. So very true. Uh, Jedi says, uh, my methods have been misunderstood and unfairly judged. Boo to you, boo. Mainly boo to Chris, but boo to Jordan <laughs> too, boo. That's that's unfair. I'm I'm the biggest Jedi fan of the we, two of us. I don't know about that. I like Jedi a lot. We both like him. Mm, we 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 really like do him. both like him. That's the problem is we that do. he's got a grudge with us, and we actually like him. Okay, so I want to talk about this scene because <laughs> we come back and we come back to a scene where Minako and uh, Minako encounters Haruka in uh, the Crown Arcade. She is playing the same F1 racing game that she played the first time they met Haruka. So there's a nice little bit of continuity there. God driving. Yeah, God driving. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, You even see the title in this one, in case you forgot this game is called God Driving. Uh, So Haruka and uh, Minako start walking around, and Minako, Minako goes, Haruka... Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> and Haruka's response is to go, I explained that before. <laughs> like, keep up. Keep keep up, Mina. Um, and I was watching this uh, episode with Aiden last night. We, we were watching it on the, like, as we ate dinner so that I could get ready for the show. And Aiden, uh, I think she missed the, the episode. I, I had to tell her about the episode where they take Jupiter in the car and they're like, hey, do you want to ride around in the car with us? But Aiden is watching this and just goes... So is Sailor Moon S just all about Haruka showing up and lesbianing at people? Because that is yeah. basically what happens. They have a, like, Minako has a very, very subtextual slash textual conversation where she's like, Haruka, you're different. You don't have a boyfriend. How do you, how do you deal with that? Like, is that, like, what's that like? And Haruka just goes, yeah, I don't really consider myself to be different. I don't consider myself to be unusual at all. I'm just me, and I'm comfortable being me, which is pretty awesome. This is the part I was talking about as the best part of the episode, because this is, like, one of the first times that I've actually, like, felt like Haruka was not a fucking dickhead all the time, and I was and was also awesome. Yes. Mina comes up to her, and she says the thing about the boyfriend, because she, she says, don't you feel like you're missing out on ordinary happiness? Yeah. And they talk about this idea of, like, ordinary happiness, like... Which is funny because for 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 Venus, you know what she's talking about. She's talking about I I'm I I don't know if I want to be a sailor scout because that makes me have to give up on a regular life. Now it's a little weird because she's talking to Sailor Uranus, but she doesn't know that. So to her, she's literally just talking to somebody who she's calling a weirdo. She's just kind of going up to her and going like, "Well, you're not normal. Don't you ever wish you were normal so you could be happy like a normal person?" Well, it's it's in the con- like the context that they use, and the reason this is a subtextual conversation is that she puts it in the context of Haruka being a racing prodigy, which right. which I guess they know about a little bit because they have seen her win the dirt bike race a couple episodes ago, and and kick their asses at video games. Yes, and she's like, which... "Hey, you're a you're a racing prodigy, so obviously, like, are you sacrificing an ordinary happiness to follow your love of motorsports?" But, like, the real conversation that's happening is a very different conversation. Yeah, and it's good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Haruka says, yeah, I don't know what ordinary happiness is. Uh, 
And I, but I also don't consider myself as out of the ordinary. I'm just the person that I am, and that's how I feel. Which I think is a really like again, it's yeah. it's probably Haruka's best moment on the show so far. Yeah, absolutely. Non like motorcycle riding monster ass kicking division. Yeah. I think so. Uh, now, oh. Elizabeth, did you have any any thoughts on this? Because I remember you you wrote into us about Haruka uh, before. Yeah, but I would say that for me, Sailor Moon was more about being able to love girls if you want to, and if you don't want to, that's fine. Or if you want to love both gender, that's fine. And if you don't want to conform to one gender, it's fine too. So it it's all like mixed in this concept. Mm-hmm. But I think it's great since... I don't know what they did with the dub uh, with this part. Is it pretty much the same? or? I am very curious as to how this conversation plays out in the yeah. dub. It, it leaned a lot more into... Race car? <laughs> yes, into the uh, race car boom. part of it. It, it, was, it was like, how do you, how do you, you know, how, how do you deal with the fact that, that like, that's all you, what your life is about? And, and Haruka's like, hey, anybody who knows me knows that that's what I'm all about. So, like, they accept me for who I am in that respect. Yeah, it's not as great as in the, in the song, but I think it's great that they had a character like this in this anime in the year it was shown and it was obviously like a big deal for many many people because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah, this is 1994 yeah. when this is on tv yeah so it's pretty good unfortunately while they're having that conversation haruka's well, spider sense goes off and that, and just well just in case you you didn't catch all the subtext uh haruka does say i have something far more important than ordinary <laughs> happiness and Minako goes, what do you mean? And then Haruka just like, yeah, her spider sense goes off and the conversation is over <laughs> before she can before she can continue. I gotta go. And then she leaves. Why does her Spider-Man sense go off? Because like, something I don't is even know. happening soon in, with uh, Greg number two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, that's Greg, true. Greg two. Yeah. She she can she her sense goes off because the diamond egg implanted. Yeah. Here's a here's a, a thing like because of Sailor Moon, like every boring uh, heterosexual love interest is always Greg in my head. Like we have we have Greg on this show, uh, Perticus on Xena. We have been calling Greg. Uh, so apologies to all the real Gregs <laughs> out there. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're oh. all delightful. Yeah, our 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 newest patron is Greg, and you just insulted him. <laughs> Mercury says this or not Mercury. Um uh, Neptune says the seas are restless again, referring to her catchphrase from the other episode about whenever whenever there's injustice a... the <laughs> waves crash on the planet of Neptune. <laughs> whatever. Basically all right, the right, time. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. pretty much. Okay, so cut to the volleyball court where Mina is uh prettying herself up cuz yeah, she is the scene of of Mina like adjusting her bangs is really mm-hmm. cute. That's a really nice yeah. bit of like unnecessary business. Yeah, because our bangs are always the same way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. sure. So she's she she adjusts her hair so she could go in and put the moves on this boy, even though she's not necessarily a volleyball girl right now. Um, but as she walks in, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> this leading her on asshole. Yeah, <laughs> already has a girlfriend <laughs> who shows up. Uh, and Mina sees the girl come in and be like, "Hey," and and the, he's like, "You're gonna go home without me?" And she's like, "Here, I'll give you a little kiss." And she kisses him, and it's like, "What the fuck? Why did he do this shit to fucking poor Mina's brain?" Yeah, or maybe he no had answer. like an evil plan. He just like checked. If Minako was was willing to date him, and then since she wasn't so hot about it, he went to get that girl down. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But at any rate, they've got a date on Sunday, and uh, Mina's heart is broken. Yeah. But it's at that moment that he picks up the ball that has been diamondized, yeah. <laughs> and it transforms into... A monster. What's the monster's name? Haikyun is the name of the monster. Haikyun. Uh, which comes from the word haiku, which is the Japanese word for volleyball. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So she's wearing volleyball shorts. Oh, my God. Knee pads. 
and has what my wife called volley boobs. Yes. Yeah, because when you turn a ball into a monster, who would have thought that <laughs> ball would be breast? Oh my God, it's... it's <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> We missed an opportunity here to not have the monster version of Tennis Ball Sailor Moon. Oh, which is a big volleyball with like good. feet and hands sticking out of it. But no, we had to have this bizarre fetish monster. So they also, she also has uh, one of those uh, Japanese like slogan bandan- uh, headbands that they wear, mm-hmm. uh, which the internet tells me most of the time of the episode says certain victory. Mm. But at some points in the episode, it changes to either saying annoying, wicked, frightened, or defeat. That's I'm pretty sure good. You can guess when some of those mm. things are. Uh. And she has like this, this like red thing on her face, like uh, someone smashed smashed the ball in her face. <laughs> well, I, I had assumed it was the Japanese flag. Oh yeah, yeah. She's, she's like got the Japanese flag painted on her face, like she's a volleyball I, I, fan. I didn't get it? I, I was sure it was like what did. I, Something happened, like <laughs> someone smashed a ball you in their she'd face. Been injured. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> so Minako sees this, and Minako like calls the other scouts, and in what is like they finally remembered that you cut, like you can constantly see the scouts' wrists, and they're never wearing their watches. So she's just like holding up her communicator watch, uh, like in her hand. Like she's like, yeah, I'm not wearing this gaudy piece of shit. <laughs> like I'll, I'll carry it in my book bag. It's fine. And she transforms and makes the scene as Sailor Venus. Sailor Venus. That's good. And uh, then she gives her little speech. Uh, oh, allow me to punish you with love, I think. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> allow me to punish you with love. And so the uh, volleyball girl, basically volleyball serves energy at people. Sure. Sensible. Mm-hmm. And Venus uh, stops it <laughs> pretty easily. <laughs> but then she catches Venus in a volleyball net, and that works. Yes. Uh, Minako gets tied up in uh, the volleyball net. Yeah, because she said, like, you touched the net. Like, she... Yeah. She <laughs> net violation. Yep. Now, Chris, where does this monster keep her star tattoo? Uh, Haikian keeps her star tattoo on, uh, I can't tell if it's, it's on both of her hands or just the one, but it she's is. got it, like, she's no. got it on her thumb, right where you would, uh, bump the ball. If you, yeah, it's, 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 it's spread out over both of her hands. She has to put them together. Yeah. Yeah. I checked, uh, the rest of the episode and when she, when her, you could see it on her hands for the rest of the episode, yeah. like half on each hand. And it's pretty funny. It pulls out Volleyball Greg's uh, crystal heart. And again, again, <laughs> Kale the Knight shows up, takes heart and goes, this is trash. <laughs> like, why? What is the, is there any, like, rhyme or reason to who, who has a talisman? I mean, you'll see. <laughs> there, are, there are so many people in the world. So there have to be so many people with pure hearts. that Like, you're going to spend so much time trying to figure out who's got a pure heart. I, I bet if you thought about it for a couple of seconds, you could figure it out. I mean, I told you my theory is that Usagi, it's Usagi who has the purest heart of all. Seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. But you never know. Uh, speaking of which, Usagi is peeping on them. I don't know how she got the idea to go look oh, at volleyball Venus practice. Venus called her. Venus called her. Oh, right. She yeah. said she called her. Right. She called her on the phone. So she shows up, she transforms, and she uh, helps out. Yeah, she does TR action. She does uh, even Moon though TR we action. Moon TR action's back. Yeah. yeah. If only, if only she had uh, done her sonic cry. <laughs> I have a feeling we're never going to see that again. I don't think we ever see it. Uh, but she does Moon TR action, and then she says, "Yeah, that was attack number one that punishes evildoers," which I think is awesome. Because she's like, "Yeah, that's like, I got some other shit." Oh, did she say that too? Yeah. Did she say attack number one? Yeah, she said that's attack number one. Oh, because I, I was just seeing, I didn't know that's where she said it. Apparently, that's a reference. Uh, the internet tells me that's a reference. Attack number one is the name of a famous anime series about volleyball. Oh, maybe. Oh. In the new dub, she just says, time out. I'm going to punish you for unsportsmanlike conduct. Okay. Uh, you're, you're not supposed to be uh, topless for volleyball. You're definitely not supposed to tear out someone's heart. <laughs> oh, that too. I think that is the bigger problem. 
as always, Kaylee Knight is just like, uh, whatever, gotta go. Uh, so that's when this episode gets super weird. <laughs> uh, Haikyun takes the pure heart and encases it in energy to turn it into a volleyball. And then, like, the question is, what are we supposed to do with this thing? Uh, cause yeah. we can't let it shatter, right? But right. it also seems like you probably don't want to hit it. So Usagi is just kind of dancing back and forth like she has to go to the bathroom really bad. And then the rest of the scouts jump in and we get like this awesome three scouts doing uh, volleyball moves on, on this But they thing. do hit them. Oh, they absolutely they do hit, hit it. Them. They absolutely hit it. But then Ray catches it. A thing you're not traditionally supposed to do in volleyball. Yeah. But like, you know, when uh, in episode 98... They were, uh, Sailor Moon was saying, oh, that's so, such a dirty trick. That's a dirty trick. This one is. <laughs> like, yeah, using yes. a knife to, like, threaten your enemy is not so much, but this one is. Right, yeah, this one actually is. The, the diamond makes the volleyball heart fly around erratically, and the scouts are like, oh, shit, how do we deal with that? I was really hoping this would turn into the Sailor Senshi have to play a full-on volleyball game against a bunch of monsters. Like, that is... I was that, really yeah. hoping that's what it would be. And it... For a second, I thought it was going to happen, yeah. And it kind of is? Kind well, of? Well, not really. Not really. Because Venus basically goes, I'll receive this one. And it's like... Which is also fucked up because the monster's playing by rules. I mean, it's breaking the rules, too, but it's also, like, doing a thing. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll play a formal... I'll play a formal round if that's what we want to do. So it serves the ball, but the ball is also like jerking around crazy like. And Venus does, oh shit, guys. <gasps> Venus does her patented special move that she invented because we know this because we Googled it and no one else had ever done it, apparently. She does that move. She does the flying dog. And the dude whose heart is out of his body is awake for some reason. <laughs> and he sees this happen. <laughs> So just before that, you know, uh, Greg number two was like on the wall and like pale and the way he was, his body was placed and how he screamed when they pull out his heart. He's in a zombie TV show, basically. He's, he's <laughs> yes. But no one's aware of it. He's the only one like playing in that zombie universe. I I was going to say it's... It's such a good thing that everyone who gets their heart pulled out is always, like, comatose or, like, possessed by kissing demons. Like, the, they don't notice all the transformations going on around them. Uh, but it turns out, like, uh, Volleyball Greg is just like, So, that sa that flying dig and flip, that means the Sailor Venus is really Minako. Yeah. Uh, so he, like, full-on awake. So, once again, what does removing your pure heart actually do to you? Transform you into a zombie. <laughs> we get moon spiral heart attack yeah yeah mars catches it they do moon spiral heart attack the monster does not say lovely does not say lovely what does it say chris uh go japan it says uh japan Nippon go, go, gan, go. Gan, gan, which means japan go 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 yeah. that's weird <laughs> oh, she, she's a sports fan she's rooting for the japanese volleyball team and then another favorite part of the episode for how dumb it is we see that Neptune and Uranus are standing around a corner on the stage out of sight. And they are like, there was nothing for us to do today. <laughs> <laughs> Literally says nothing for us to do today. I guess you just had to have a little bit of character development in your civilian identity. <laughs> so oh, silly. And the, the egg exiting the ball is oh, so sexual. <laughs> Your favorite, yeah. your favorite and, part and every time. Like, Michiru doesn't understand the concept of hiding. Or no, she's not well hidden, no. Senshi don't understand the concept of hearing stuff when they are said out loud. Yeah, because they're on opposite sides of that, of that stage. so loud. Ow. <laughs> ah. It makes no, no sense. Once again, uh, I remember that at the beginning of this episode, Artemis was like, yeah, we still don't know what's creating the diamonds. Uh, not only do they miss the diamond egg like being pooped out of the volleyball, but then it like cracks and a ghost comes out of it. <laughs> yeah. And nobody notices. <laughs> They're all too busy being like, oh, Mina, you're so good at volleyball. So then Greg comes up with his 
Greg Jr. comes up with his did girlfriend. Did he have an English name? Tamina. Jordan, did you catch his English name? He must have, but I don't remember what it is. You want me to look it up? I, I can actually look it up. I've got a I've got Wiki Moon open right now. Uh, Jamie. Oh boy. Wait, is it really? Yeah. Oh, that's not as good. Uh, Greg too. Greg Jr. Yeah, Greg, too. Greg Deuce. So Greg Jr. walks up with his girlfriend to Mina and goes, "Hey Mina, do me a favor. If you ever meet Sailor Venus, tell her I said thanks." Uh, yeah, and Mina goes, yeah, um, Sailor Venus actually had a message for you, too. It's, uh, it's stop leading me on, you fucking asshole. <laughs> uh, that's what Sailor Venus told me that when I saw her last. It's very funny. Yeah, and then his girlfriend is like, mm, okay, you're done talking to this girl. Let's go now. And then he's going to heat <laughs> yep. her brains. Because <laughs> yeah. he's a zombie still. Oh, yeah. Then... A, a shrub or a tree calls out to, <laughs> to Mina, to calling her like, hey, good looking or something. What, what does the tree hey, say to lady. Yeah. Miss. And then there's a, 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 a bouquet of roses in a tree. And then oh, out pops Artemis. And he says, will you be my date tonight? <sighs> and he tosses her the roses. And she blushes and says, I'll think about it. The end. The end. And then they get married. <laughs> no. No. Oh, He's a cat. Boy. He's a cat. A lot, of, a lot of inappropriate relationships in this show, now that I'm, yeah. now that I'm really paying attention to it. So, it's time for us to talk about what we learned uh, when we watched this episode. What moral lessons we can take away. It's time for Sailor Business says. And Elizabeth, what did you learn from episode 100 of Sailor Moon? I learned, but I kind of already knew it. That eggs are sexual and gross, and that Tomoe is a pervert. <laughs> uh, Jordan, what did you learn? Uh, I learned that Mina just absolutely did not hide that she was Sailor Venus, and just licensed that Tomoe. shit out, and gets sent products to her door. I learned that you can, not only can you live without a heart, but you can like be aware of things without a heart. Like you, can, oh, as, yeah. you just get a little sweaty. You just get the flu for like ten minutes. And you have like, sh like intense shingling on the side. <laughs> <laughs> can you believe we've learned a hundred things each, Jordan, from the show? Wow, that's a lot. So yeah, that's episode one hundred. Uh, final thoughts. Somebody, somebody, somebody should go through and write them all down. Yeah, and, and as ancient wisdom, and put it in a book, and then sell the book, and we get money. That's what should happen. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. 100 lessons we learned from Sailor Moon. Someone please publish it. Or isn't that a poster? Everything I learned, I, everything I needed to know I learned from Sailor Moon? Yeah, probably. Uh, anyway, final thoughts on the episode. Uh, again, I thought this was fun. I thought this was probably the best Minako spotlight we've had. Um, oh, I like it better, better than, than the, the one where everybody's sick. Yeah, I like it better than the, the Nurse Minako keeps fucking up episode. That was really pretty cute. I think I prefer the one with the children. Oh, yeah. Wheels on the bus. Our next target is babies. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, like, I, thought, I think this one was fun. Um, all of Minako's, like, not all of Minako's stories, but like so many of Minako's stories involve like ex-boyfriends. Like her, her, her ex boy, she used to be in love with. Like I guess, I guess he wasn't really her boyfriend because he was like in his thirties. <laughs> but what was his name? Alan. Was but his name Alan Moon, from when uh... in your thirties? You always get the young girl. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. You can you can be between thirty and forty five. But yeah, um, Elizabeth, do you have any, boyfriend. I don't know. Any final thoughts on the episode? Basically, that it's not the greatest. There's some good parts, but the monster is. So damn dull. <laughs> not as good as the not as good as the streetcar monster. No, absolutely. Oh, the streetcar not. monster is so great. Chris, I think when we finish this season, you're gonna have to rank all the monsters. Oh, that's a really good idea. That's a good good idea. Sc Scarf is up there. Scarf is Scarf is a good one. But is she better than Wheel? You mean steering? Yeah, steering. I'm steering, sorry. I steering is the best. Steering is is number one. Toten is number two. I think so far. So far, we'll see what happens. Um, yep. So yeah, that's that's it for the episode. That's episode 100 of Sailor Moon, everybody. Thank Yay. you for listening. 